Well, welcome everyone for one more episode of Hope in Turmoil. Bishop Noonan, Father Miguel, and myself, we are joined today by some of the elects of the Diocese of Orlando, those who are waiting for uh, the sacraments uh, the, of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and First Holy Eucharist. So today we're going to get to hear their story and how their journey uh, gets to this point. And let us begin by asking our bishop to lead us in prayer. As this time of Easter, you know, right after Easter, we have the Acts of the Apostles, the early church, what's happening in the early church. But the gospel this morning was, we always see it at football games, John three sixteen. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. So on those words, let me ask the Lord's, to be, the Lord's blessing be upon you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord, we give you thanks, especially for this great season of Easter where we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We pray especially for our catechumenate, those who are about to be baptized, those who are about to be received into the church. With joy, we welcome them. And we pray that we may really truly be with them soon. And we ask you, Lord, to bless them and bless their families. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Apparently, Bishop is a fan of Tim Tebow because he mentioned John 3.16. That's what Tim Tebow usually put on his, uh, his cheek, didn't he? Uh, yes, exactly. Bishop, you need to you need to ask him for you know a little donation because you put a plug in for him and, and now show. Well, a lot of people use John three sixteen, so you know there might be I might have to ask a lot of other people too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to have a friendly call. We're going to go straight to the SEC football. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, we, we won't be recording this during the draft, I can tell you that. You know, we'll all be very serious. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome, my friends. Um, Thank you. For the three of us, Bishop Noonan, Father Miguel, and myself, we're what they call the cradle Catholics. Uh, we are baptized and always been raised in the Catholic faith. And for myself personally, we've always been very uh, interested in listening to uh, someone's faith journey. And so if you would take this time just to introduce yourself a little and tell us about uh, yourself and your faith journey. Uh, why don't we begin with, uh, with Lawrence? Uh, well, thank you, um, Father Martin. Uh, hi, I'm Lawrence Abo. I'm uh, a permissioner at Most Precious Blood uh, here in Oviedo. Uh, my wife, Kimberly, is also um, a member of the uh, church She's in the choir, and um, we have three beautiful children, in which one of them, Chelsea, she is in, um, she's an altar server within her uh, fourth year now with the um, um, congregation. So we're very blessed for that. Um, I guess I could say my journey is that I actually um, am Jewish, and I was raised Jewish, uh, but for many of the past um, couple years um, through my life, I would say kind of like my early teenage, I felt something was missing. I felt uh, I wasn't connected to God as well as I wanted to be. And um, it just took me a long time to figure out, you know, who I was inside, what God wanted, you know, me of the person to be for him and for myself. So, um, to that point up to after 16 years of wonderful marriage with uh, Kimberly and myself, uh, over about a year and a half ago, I decided to um, seek the uh, information of possibly becoming um, Catholic. And um, there's a lot of actually sleepless nights that I, uh, you know, uh, had and figured, is this right for me? And it, I had to prove to a lot of people, including my family, that I wasn't doing this for him herself or our kids, I was doing it for me because that was what I know that I wanted for, that's what God wanted to know, you know, he's going to be comfortable with that. You know, he, he will be okay with that. He'll say, this is the right move for you. So, so that's why I'm here and everything. And i um, taking RCI classes um, with Donna over at Precious Blood. And it's been unbelievably great. Uh, we've had um, a, beautiful time with everybody. I've met such an amazing, magical group of people and just praying every day, 
that this, you know, we'll get through this and stuff. And, you know, with hope, faith, and love, you know, um, you know, we'll receive our sacraments and get to. Of course, Lawrence, uh, I, I apologize in the middle of all that, then we give you a new pastor. You have Father Josh now, you know? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no apologies necessary. I, I mean, I, as much as I love Father David and, and Father George, um, getting to know now Father uh, Josh. Uh, swallows, uh, uh, um, Father Glenn, I love dearly to my heart. So I, I believe change is good because it, it spreads out your wings more and you're able to, you know, get more connected with the community. So um, thank you for sending him, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not, you're not upset. That's what I mean. Because he just went no. there in December, you know, and yeah, you had to do a big change, you know. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> but, but, Two thumbs up. We, we love okay. them. <laughs> okay. Very good. How about the Browns? Tell us about yourselves. Um, which one first? Well, <laughs> I, I think Maddox, I think you should go first since you kind of led the way. All right. So, um, where to start? Um, so, I'm, I'm much younger than probably, well, not to brag at all. <laughs> I don't want to be like, <laughs> but I, I, it's, Apparent that I'm, I'm a still a teenager. I'm 14, and um, you all look super young. But <laughs> I'm not trying to. Um, but um, I was born not going to church. Um, my mother was Episcopalian. Her uh, her grand, my grandma, her mother, it was a Catholic, and then she married my grandfather, and they decided to meet in the middle. And so they started. They, she grew up going to Episcopal. Episcopalian church, and so um, and when my mom, my dad is uh was Jewish, and um, and so when they got married, they decided just to uh, not take us to church every weekend, and so we still believed in God, but we didn't really go to church for about I'd say 13, 12, maybe eleven years of my life, but um, over the years, um, we have a good friend, uh, Sylvia Abreu, and I started going to church with her family and um, you know I really enjoyed it so I and then oh, uh, a little while later my mother started going to church with me at Annunciation we started off at St. Joseph's but um but the Abrus eventually switched to Annunciation even though it's farther away and I really everyone in my family really fell in love with that church uh, Annunciation and um, over time my mom decided that she wanted to become Catholic and um, she decided to bring my brothers in with her. And uh, I decided I wanted to become Catholic as well. And then around, we started going around Advent. And then that Christmas, my dad said that he would let everyone become Catholic. But he himself wasn't going to become Catholic. And then, uh, long story short, here we are about, let's say, it's a, like a year and four months past that time. And he's becoming Catholic with me. And we're both going to have our first communion together and be baptized and confirmed together. So it's going to be uh, fun. And so. Wow. Uh, Wonderful story. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking forward. I'd love to be there. You know, it's a wonderful story to hear you and your dad going to do it together. Beautiful story. So, Dad, your story then. <laughs> Yeah, well, my story resonates a lot with Lawrence's story. Um, you know, I was raised Jewish and, um, you know, grew up. Uh, I bet Lawrence could, you know, one of the hardest parts of, of this process, it's been a gradual process. Um, medics kind of led the way to Annunciation and uh, Father Parks there and the whole community there was so welcoming. And, you know, growing up, I've visited many churches of different denominations um, throughout my life with friends or for weddings or what have you, and never found a community that was just so welcoming the way uh, Annunciation had been and, or, and was and is. And, and just we felt at home. And initially, as Maddox said, my, you know, we have, uh, I have five sons. Maddox is the, the second oldest, and I, my three youngest sons were all baptized at the Easter Vigil more than a year ago, just, just over a year ago. Uh, and so that was a beautiful ceremony and such a great moment. I was excited and 
you know, went through Lent at that time and just became closer and closer. And initially, as Maddox said, that, you know, my plan was I was going to just support the family. I wanted, I was raised with religion and, uh, and it was important to my life. And I felt bad that, as Maddox said, for many years, the kids had, had no religious community. And um, so I was just very excited to just participate with them. And, and that's how it started. But then uh, gradually, as my journey progressed, I, you know, felt called to to uh, to not just see this as an opportunity for my family, but as an opportunity for me. Um, and it's been fantastic. Um, we went through inquiry and uh, and then through RCIA, and you know, I committed to going through the process and and, and being on the journey. And and this is where it's led. You know, the um, one of the hardest parts, I bet, uh, Lawrence, you can commiserate with me. One of the hardest parts of the journey was telling my mom that I was going to become Catholic. Um, you know. Yes. Yeah, you can imagine. Uh, the guilt trip, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she actually handled it very well. So she lives in Chicago. And, uh, you know, I, I would go up and visit her. And on Friday nights, we'd go to synagogue at her synagogue. And then on Sunday, she came to the cathedral. <laughs> with me and uh, she even went up for a blessing uh, during the procession. So yeah, she was, she was pretty great about it. Right. So for the, for, for, for the record, it was not on your honey-do list. This was not at all on your honey-do list. <laughs> <laughs> not on the honey-do list, no. <laughs> um, the, uh, no. you know, the, you know, it's been, it's been a, a really exciting, process. But yeah, I agree with Lawrence, you know, ultimately, I didn't start the journey with a, that it was a foregone conclusion uh, that I was going to become Catholic. I started with, you know, just exploring it, but it, it's been over time, uh, you know, my, the, I've just become to the, to the conclusion that it's the right thing for me. And now, of course, we're, we're really excited. And uh, we're past the due date, we're still excited. <laughs> well, you know, one of the beautiful things is, you know, as you know, that, you know, for us anyway, everything for us, our, our rituals are very much based on Jewish traditions, mm -hmm. as you probably well may know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the most powerful people, you know, I can remember in my lifetime, you know, and Miguel and, and um, Martin will remember. For me, Edith Stein, who was a very famous young girl during the Second World War, was a very famous phenomenologist who was a philosopher. She became a nun, became Catholic, was Jewish. So that's one person that I always admired. The other one is, you may not know, was the Cardinal Archbishop of, of Paris, was Lustier. He was uh, Polish, but was brought up by a family because he lost his family in the Holocaust. And he was brought up by a family in, in Paris. And he became a Cardinal. He became a Cardinal of the Church in, in, in Paris. Wonderful, wonderful man. And some of his writings are wonderful. So you have a lot of rich tradition, you know, from your faith that really makes us as Catholics even richer. So I hope you can use both of them and, and kind of bring them together because it, it makes a lot more sense when you can use your roots and, and then add them on. You know, you're kind of, what can I say? You're grafted onto the Catholic, but you know, you're, you're, our, our roots are still in, in Judaism, you know, that kind of thing. So it, hopefully you will enjoy that journey. And because of, because of those roots, because of that rich tradition that the two of you grew up with, what would you consider was that aha moment that opened your eyes and your heart to embrace Jesus Christ and, and make this step in preparation for, for the sacraments? Well, um, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, it's you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say there were two of them, two aha moments. The, the first aha moment was just how welcoming um, the Catholic Church was, and uh, you know, and welcomed me. And, and you know, they say at Annunciation at the beginning of every Mass that we welcome people of other faith backgrounds. And I always just felt welcome there, and, and, and that it was a place that I could be not just myself, but be at peace. Um, but the second aha moment it was probably during RCIA when we were doing. Um, reading different scriptures and doing the Lexio Divina. Um, one of the stories for me, I would always 
kind of be attracted to the, the intersections between the First Testament and the Second Testament. And one of the stories that really spoke to me was the story of Joseph. And, you know, our, our church is named after the Annunciation, where Mary, uh, you know, said, let it be done to me. But if Joseph also had to go along with the plan, and, and he did, and the angel came to him, and he did also. And, and so that, to me, I kind of look at that and, and as the transition from the First Testament, which was based on law and, and really emphasized the law, we, you know, as, as Jews, we count them. There's 613 mitzvot in the, uh, in the first book. And then, you know, it's, but we transitioned from the law to the second covenant, which is, in my, from what I can tell, based on love. And, and that was the transition Joseph made. He, he had the right as, uh, you know, being engaged to marry. He could have said, I, I don't want to marry her anymore. But instead, he chose, he chose love over law. Uh, so that was a beautiful story, and I've chosen Joseph as my as my saint. Good, oh, very beautiful. Good. Oh, beautiful. How about you, Lawrence? Um, I would have to say that the big aha for me was when I decided to, after listening to so many evenings with my wife, um, to talk to somebody about it, how I felt, because you know she did say that. I can give you as much as information as, uh, as I can try to, but you know what? You may want to hear from other people, you know? I mean, I, no matter what you do, it, I'll support you, you know? And um, I will, you know, be there for you. I just want to make sure you're doing it for you, you know? Uh, through that, you know, uh, it will be for us as, a, as, as under the umbrella but um, it's got to come because it's got to be something that you want to do. And because you're going to be living this day every day and you have to, you have to be happy with yourself. You have to be, you know, and, and when I went in and spoke to uh, one of our, our permissioners, John Malloy out there um, who um, oversees the, um, you know, uh, uh, the church and one of the offices, he's, um, the first, when I told him about how I feel and everything, um, he said to me, okay, well, why don't we sit down, you know, have a, you know, we, we sat down right in, 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 in the church and everything and the back row, just me and him intimate one-on-one. And, one. and um, he said, so what makes you come today to me? You know, um, I want to hear from you, you know, and uh, I, I want to know that, you know, what are you feeling, you know? And then uh, is it something you just want to be participated more with your kids? Because Chelsea's doing altar serving, Devin is working the audio, you know, Riley, my young one, he's, he's still trying to find his place, you know, you just, you know, cause we can do, you can go to the activities and not, you know, become Catholic. And I said, but there's something more. It's something inside me. It's like, I don't know. It's like a beast trying to get out, you know? Um, I just can't explain it. And, 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 and um, he said, well, I think in a way you, he said something I'll never forget. He said that, I think you really, I think you are explaining it. It's a feeling. That's what it is. It's a feeling. And we, I mean, I thought maybe 10, 15 minutes after we got done and after we prayed, I'm telling you, it was like, I looked at my watch and I was like, it's like two hours later. We just talked and I got so much and he listened. He, and like what you said, um, Sir Brown, I've never been, I never I can't remember the last time I've been in, in a, any kind of congregation um, that I felt so supported and so appreciative and said, you know what, we're here for you. And we're not, we're not here to push you. We're not here to, we're here to walk with you, you know, and when you, it's your time, it's your time. So I, I piggyback on what you said, sir, is that it's the people who are there for you, you know, and it makes you more, it makes you more appreciative. Like, wow, they really care for what I feel, you know, and everything because they obviously are going or have gone through the same thing, you know? So, um, so yeah, I, I, I feel that, you know, that that's a very big, big aha for me and I'm very blessed for it. Maddox, you said you're 14, right? Yeah. So did you, uh, did you have your bar mitzvah last year? 
Uh, no, no, sir. I, uh, oh, no, Dad, that's a big fail. You better <laughs> party hard for him when he's baptized. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you, are you in eighth grade? Uh, yeah, I'm in eighth grade. Where do you go to school? I go to Avalon Middle School. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, the reason I ask is, you know, even though I was baptized and raised uh, as a Catholic all my life, but when I was in sixth grade, after my grandmother died, um, my grandmother was a major impact in, in my faith. She was the one who inspired me and who guided me on this journey of faith. She died. She died of cancer when I was in sixth grade. And the, about a month after, I, I just left the church. I abandoned my faith altogether. Didn't pray, didn't go to mass. Uh, and then, you know, I went through a really rough period of time. But when I was in uh, the second term of my, uh, um, of my eighth grade, towards the end of, of my eighth grade year, as something clicked and, and I went back to mass for the first time in, uh, in, in the longest time. It was November 3rd of 2004. Uh, I was, I was uh, 14 at that point, I think. Um, Oh my God, that's all? <laughs> bishop, Bishop, Bishop. Yeah, I'm, I'm a young buck. Fine, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that was the day. That was the day I went back to Mass for the first time, November 3rd of 2004. And, and that feeling oh. at home was something that I could never, ever forget. Um, and you know, I admire you because you know, it's it's harder for for younger people to find religion interesting. You know, sometimes you go into church and uh, the priest talk forever, and you're like, could you please, you know, end this already? <laughs> but but remember that faith at the end of the day is a relationship, a friendship with the Lord. You know, He loves us so much and is willing to die for us. And, and no matter mis what mistakes we make, that there's a place for us in God's heart. And so keep that in mind, you know, especially as you, uh, as you enter high school and, and college and uh, life is going to bring a lot, a lot of, uh, of temptations, the fun of life. But don't forget that you always have a place in God's heart. Okay? I will do. I will certainly do. Yes. What's that? I certainly will. And if you ever decide that you want a little collar on on your shirt like this, just let just let us know. We'll we'll make sure that you get there. Well, I have five. Get my job. Anybody else have any questions? No, but Dad says he's got five sons. You know, you've got five sons. Oh yeah. All right, give Holy Mother just one, the one yeah. with good hair. But look at the Parkses. Look at, you know, Stephen Parks has a brother, too, you know, and his brother Greg is a bishop. So they were both priests of the diocese. And we have, a, we have two brothers, two twins. They were twins. You know, we have um, Paul and Peter Henry. Both of them were ordained priests. You know, it's unusual. No, and of course, we have sure, Father Miguel, friend. you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but don't forget also Father Blewett, who has oh, a yes. brother also, who's, who's a, a priest as well. Well, he's got four brothers. They're four brothers priests. Can you imagine? That's exactly right. Wow. 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 Yeah. Six That's boys. Amazing. There were six boys in the family and two girls, and only one boy escaped. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, the two wow. girls got married. You know? Now, Father Miguel, if, if memory serves right, uh, your mother entered into the church uh, later on in, in, in her life, and that certainly impacted the family. Um, so what, what advice, what uh, insights would you want to share with, with our friends here about you know, a life of faith as, um, as you see your mother grow in the faith as well? Well, the, the impact of my mother was definitely the Eucharist. Uh, that's what really uh, uh, transformed her life and has become the center of her life ever since. And that's what's been her uh, greatest uh, uh, desire, along with my father, in, in sharing that gift with the children. So uh, my, my hope and prayer is that as you enter into the church and 
and embrace the sacraments of initiation to, to recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread, to recognize that he is your companion, your friend, your brother, your source of strength and hope as you persevere in life, and to know that you can have a conversation with him as, as for example, father and son are having uh, in this beautiful relationship, and or husband and wife, for that matter. Uh, to know that Christ indeed is, is definitely uh, the central piece that, that will help us grow and persevere in our faith. So rely on the Eucharist. Now, you, it's rare that you get a chance to, to corner the bishop and have a conversation. And so, you know, for all three of us priests here, do you have any questions, anything that you would like to ask us? Um, well, um, I guess the big one for me is, um, and I don't want to make it sound kind of like, or, you know, like, I know with everything going on in our world right now, uh, you know, we are trying to get through this with COVID-19. Uh, but, you know, I, I pray a lot and I ask God for, an, you know, answers when I, when I ask him questions, you know, any, anything that, you know, I could do to help, anything that, you know, um, that is, is something missing, you know, is something like, are, are, are you going to tell us something uh, that we haven't gained all the pieces of information. Uh, my question for you is, is you know, do, do you see, you know, the hope, do you see like God is, is going to give us the answers that we're looking for and we're, we're going to be, we're getting, we're going to get through this. That, that, that would be my question. You mean during this crisis of the, you know, the, 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 the virus, I would say, you know, yeah. my experience and, the, you know, the two priests can answer this. I, I feel it's a time, you know, there are moments in, in our life where we're asked to reflect. And this is a reflective mm -hmm. moment where we have to kind of look over and see where are we. And I think a lot of us, because we've had to stay at home, you probably will be able to experience both of you, you know, as, as, as husbands. You've had to, had to take a new look at your life. You know, you have yeah. to look at your family, you know, because you have to live with them now a little more. So you kind of have to, what are, what's really the value or what's the meaning of my life in a whole new way? You know, and where is God in all this, you know, and mm. where is their hope? You know, and, and is there, you know, we can kind of get very doom and gloom. But I think for me, it's been, yeah, there has been some anxiety and uh, fear you know the reality of this is serious but there's also a kind of a sense of okay what do i need to do now i need to do something more and, and the more i need to do is is really to build on my faith you know and, and and that is the thing that's going to kind of give me that strength that 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 hope for the future and hope leads to you know even greater things. It doesn't lead to despair. It leads to the really awareness of what it is to love somebody. And as you know, both of you are married, you know, as dads, you know, you love your wife and you love your children. And for us as celibates, it's, it's a greater awareness of the love that God has for us through Jesus Christ. So it's kind of, you know, we have to kind of stir our hearts again to, to really make sure that what we do in our ministry is really bringing that message of hope to the people and bring in that love of Christ to others. So hopefully, you know, our priests are going to come back with a, with a, you know, with more enthusiasm or more, more, a stronger faith. That's the way I see, you know, and, and I can see it with the people, mm -hmm. see it in the lives of the people. Father Miguel. Thank you. Uh, basically, uh, the, the very fact that the answer to the question, I think that the, the, we have brought that answer, and I'm not talking about us priests, I'm talking about the entire uh, society. When you start seeing the good news that has uh, overcome the bad news, the terrible news, the sad news. When you start seeing people caring for each other, helping each other, supporting each other, sacrificing their very lives for the well-being of others. We're seeing those stories that really uh, speak to us about who we are as human beings created in the image and likeness of God, called to love, called to serve. So at the end of the day, uh, I see hope 
and hope never disappoints. Father Martin. Right. The, the major question that a lot of people wonder is, you know, where is God in all of this? And why a good God would allow suffering to exist in the world? And this is the, 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 basis, uh, the basis for the argument in the book of Job. If you look at the, uh, the Old Testament, a good man, a good and righteous man, and the suffering that he endured, and, and even in a moment in, in, of his frustration, he, he cried out to God, and he asked God, why? And God never quite gave an answer, because at, at times there are things in life that we cannot explain, but the question is, can we experience and see God in the midst of those pains and sufferings? And the sacrifices and the courage and the selfless um, attitude that so many have been exemplifying uh, show us the face of God. Where is hope? Hope is where love exists. Hope exists in your family when you guys sit down together and actually have a family meal. And in spite of all the anxieties and worry that you're facing, you bring about laughter to each other. That's where hope is born. Um, can we get through this? Absolutely. Why? Because hu humanity has gone through so much. And whenever human beings, when we cooperate with God's grace, whenever we go through suffering, we come out stronger and better. Uh, and, and just to answer it briefly, can we? Yes, we can. Will we? Absolutely. And God is going to walk with us every step of the way. Okay. Yeah. And the question. Well, uh, this has been a, a great process, both last year and this year. Um, Lent has been very powerful to me. And in, in, in this year, you know, last year, it culminated in my three youngest sons being baptized. This year, we were anticipating Maddox and I joining the church together. So we still have that anticipation. And, and we still have that hope and we still have that excitement and, uh, and we're waiting for that, um, but uh, we're excited for it. And, but uh, I hope now, I'm going to guarantee it won't be 40 years, so don't worry. It's not going to be <laughs> a desert experience, so don't worry, you know. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we hope that, you know, it, the, the day will come much sooner so that, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. doesn't grow out of his suit. Otherwise, it's going to come up to baptism and, and his pants is going to be up to his knees. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. Thank you. It's beautiful to listen to your stories. Uh, and, and so we're going to close with uh, Bishop final words and a blessing for all of you. And I wish you all well. And I hope and soon, you know, it'll yeah. be, you know, when we open up the church, it might take a few weeks before we welcome you in because we want to make sure we're going to welcome you with the congregation. You know, we can baptize you today or tomorrow, but we want to make sure it's, it's a celebration, not just to, just to do it. So thank you for being patient with us, and, but know that we really want you and we're looking forward to having you in the church with us and walking with us. So without further ado, I ask the priest to join me in blessing you. So we ask the Lord be with you. And, and with your blessing, spirit. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, spirit. descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you for joining us.